This video is sponsored by Raycon. Welcome to my kitchen. Hello everyone and welcome to a special episode of Cooking with Pig, Quarantine Cooking with Pig, that's what we're gonna call it. Because in this massive pandemic that's happening right now, no one has anything. I went to Walmart the other day looking for something to eat, couldn't find anything, couldn't find the meats, couldn't find the veggies, couldn't find anything. Paper towels, I'm out of paper towels. Could someone send me some paper towels? We're out, please. And of course, we're out of all the frozen pizzas, all the ramen, all the quick stuff. So what I normally do in trying times like this is make some homemade pizza, which is the simplest thing in the world. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do my special recipe. You can't really tell anyone. I, I know it's a video on the internet and anyone can watch it, but don't, don't, shh, shh, don't, don't tell anyone about this recipe. But the reason I'm doing this is for many reasons. One, I make a fine freaking pizza. Number two, it's quarantine time. People don't have a lot of stuff. People don't necessarily know how to make a lot of homemade things. So I'm gonna show you an easy way to make something really freaking good for really freaking cheap with stuff around your house. It'll something that'll help you relax, use your hands a bit, and you know, forget about the inevitable demise of the entire human race, you know, that whole thing. All right, enough of me talking, let's go. All you need is three-fourths cups of water two cups of flour, cocaina, a little bit of sugar, a little bit of salt, and then of course, the yeast is the important ingredient then. Maybe you don't have, but let's be real, you probably have it, and if you don't have it, I guarantee you could find it. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put your yeast in your warm water, by the way, not hot. You don't want it like scolding hot, you just want it semi-warm. And then you're gonna want it set in the water for just a little bit, let it what they call blossom, put your sugar and your salt in your flour mixture, flip it around a little bit, also, Put your oven to 425, you don't necessarily have to right now because you have to let the dough rise, but I mean, let's be real guys, a lot of you are in college, maybe you're in your apartments, you've probably never turned on your oven in your life, so you might check that there isn't something in there that might, you know, catch on fire. So go ahead and mix around your yeast and warm water a little bit just to get it moving around, and then we're just gonna pour it in here. Oh, yes. And then we're just gonna scoop it into, you don't wanna like hardcore stir the thing, you just wanna like just gradually, just like, just like you're petting, you're petting your dog. Uh, I mean, don't be a linity. Don't, don't like throw your cat across the room. You know, you just want to pet your cat. You don't want to throw your cat across the room. You don't want to, you don't want to kill your cat. You just want to pet it. You just want to be nice to your cat. I mean, dogs are better than cats. Let's just talk about dogs. You pet your dog, not your cat. Am I right, guys? Am I right? Okay, now after you've formed a little ball, kind of like this bad boy right here, just... Oh, yeah. Now the next part is you're gonna knead the dough for 10 to 15 minutes. If you don't know what kneading is, it's basically just working the dough, moving it around, stretching it out. But if you have one of these, all you have to do is plop it in, put on one of these, it'll spin around, you're good to go. But if you have to use your hands, I mean, hey, it'll work your hands a little bit. But I mean, come on, what? What, you can't afford one of these just because you're unemployed because of the coronavirus and all it's gonna, gonna get is like $1,200 maybe just to help you out with your many, many bills. You might not be able to afford anything and thing. I'm gonna shut up now. All right, what you're gonna do is plop this right in here. Oh yeah, just like that. Oh yeah. Now what you can do is put a tad bit of olive oil in there while it's rolling, but once again, they didn't have any at Walmart, so we're just gonna not use the olive oil. But the olive oil does kind of help a little bit to, to round it into a nice little ball. But you're gonna do this for around 15 minutes, and uh, then it'll form into a nice juicy ball. But while this is spinning, let's talk, let's talk about some good things. Good things that happen in light of the coronavirus. Those people in Florida, the, the partiers, the kids who were like, uh, yeah, yeah, we don't care about the coronavirus. If we get it, we get it, who cares? They got coronavirus, fuck them. Uh, what's some other good things? Oh, uh, people licking toilets for a coronavirus challenge. Boom, got coronavirus. Another good thing that happened. Gas prices are low. Um, it doesn't matter because you're not going to be driving anywhere, but hey, that that's uh, something. All right, our dough's looking a little bit goopy and sticky, so what I'm going to do is add a little bit of cocaine. You kind of just need to eyeball it. If it's looking gooey, it needs flour. If it's looking dry, it needs a little bit of water. So this is basically what you want it to look like, just a nice ball flapping around, 
nothing stuck to the bottom. It's kind of just all by itself. It's not too dry. You don't see any flour and you also don't see much dough sticking anywhere. So this is kind of your end product, just a nice ball of dough. And then what you're gonna do is get olive oil, but I don't have olive oil because obviously sold out. So what we got is this. It's literally all they had left. You could kind of use whatever oil you want, but olive oil obviously is the best option. And you just kind of dab it in there a little bit. And it's gonna roll around the ball with this oil and get the oil all over the ball. Oh yeah, it's right in the microphone, yes. Oh, that's nice, that's good, that's, that's good, that's nice. Yeah. Boom, you got yourself some dough. And what you're gonna do with this dough is you have two options. One, you could just cover it with paper towels, cling wrap or whatever lid or whatever you have and then you're just gonna put it either in the fridge for 24 hours, which is what I recommend because it's always the better option. Take it out about like 30 minutes before you cook it or, or before you mess with it so it can uh, rise and get warm again. Or you can just leave it for two hours out wherever you want, just do the same thing, cover it with whatever, and then just kind of just put it in a warm location, which is basically your entire house, let's be real. Unless you can't afford the electricity bill, unless you can't afford your gas bill for heat because of the corona. Food Network Chef Channel, some good fucking food. This is what you're gonna get. So now, let's get to our toppings. This is where you can kinda just go wild. Whatever you have around your house, you can just throw on a pizza and make a pizza. You got ranch, use that as the sauce. You got barbecue sauce, Use that as the sauce. You can, you can do whatever you want. Fuck it, you tired? You tired? Get some z -Quil. Throw that on there. It, yeah. Don't do that. I, I wouldn't do that. But what we're gonna use is some Prego traditional. Um, obviously, I guarantee it, someone has this around your house. You still live with your parents? I'm sure they got Prego, Ragu, or whatever tomato sauce available. You can just use plain tomato sauce because it doesn't matter because this shit is so bland it won't matter because we're gonna add seasoning anyway. And then I'm only doing this because I love it. Uh, pepperoncinis, you might not have pepperoncinis, you might have jalapenos uh, or something else in a jar, just like a little extra spice to it. Cause we ain't looking for nothing fresh. We ain't looking for fresh veggies. We're looking for stuff that's in the fridge. And for the most important aspect of it, cheese. I, I'm not even joking. I actually have a lot of cheese because I've been making a lot of pizza, but you might have your sharp cheddar. Ooh, don't cut yourself. Boom, good joke. You might have your basic mozzarella. You might have your fresh mozzarella, some Parmesan. Hey, hey. Fuck it, you can make a breakfast pizza. Crack an egg on there, you know, get a little bacon bits on there, some, some cheese. Mm, oh, hey. It's quarantine, baby. We're gonna make do. What, you got some ramen? Got some ramen chicken seasoning packets? Toss it on there. I mean, what, you got many options? But now we get to mess with the dough a little bit, and this is the difficult, and fun part, this is the part where you're gonna learn, where it's gonna take maybe a little bit of practice. It took me a little bit of practice to get good at this shit. But if your dough's good enough, you won't really have to worry about it. And that is a nice freaking dough. It feels good, it, oh, it smells good. I'm, I'm horny, I'm horny for that dough. It's kinda just cut it in half because we're gonna be making pizza and cheese sticks because cheese sticks all you need is dough and cheese. You don't really need the sauce and all the other toppings. What we're gonna do with this dough, it's gonna take it, make like a little, like you're about to stick your dick through your hand, like you're about to beat off, and just shove, shove the dough through your hand like that, where it just kind of makes like a nice shape, like a nice ball. And then you snatch it at the end right here, like you're, like you're choking out your own ball. You ever just grab your balls and just shake them like that? That's kind of what you're going for. And take this little gross part and smack it down, roll it a couple times, like that, and boom. You got yourself a perfect dough right here. So you just do the same thing for the other one, you know, grab it like your ball sack, shake it around, and then you got a couple nice, a couple, a couple nice doughs. God, I'm 25 years old and I'm freaking mimicking dough boobies. Now for this next part, I want everyone to know, do not use a freaking rolling pin, okay? You're not trash, you're not garbage, you're interesting, you're unique. You know how to mess with dough. You know how to use your fingy wingies. And I'm gonna show you. Roll it in dough a little bit, and then you're just gonna massage. Just massage the outside. Use like the, the pit of your hand. Just kinda like just seduce your dough. You want your dough to submit to you. 
all right? And you can't just, you can't just force it, you know? You gotta, gotta really, really slowly ease your way in there, you know what I'm saying? And you're gonna slap your dough down and just use your fingy wingies. Just use your fingy wingies to push the dough all the way around and get that round shape. And then when you're good like me, get a little bit of acrobatics going on, you know, spin your dough around, because that's the easiest way to stretch it, the most natural way. It's already starting to get a little bit of holes here and there, but you're just gonna grab them, pop them in, and you're good to go. Now what we do next, obviously, preheat the oven to 425. I mentioned that before, but it should be at 425. And get your, obviously, pizza rack. I don't have one of those. We just have a flat one. You could use, uh, it doesn't really matter if you use a flat one or not because you don't really want it sticking to the pan because then that's just gonna be a pain in the ass in the future. <clears throat> now this next part is basically just the topping part. We're gonna get our Prego traditional. It doesn't really matter what you get because I'll be honest with everyone here, every single sauce is bland as shit. That's why there's seasoning available. And that's the secret to a good freaking pizza. So we're gonna put the sauce on there, you know, roll it around just like a regular pizza. Just get it around all the edges, not all the way to the edge, because we still want some nice crispy crust. Screw it, you could even make some stuffed crust. Just get some, some cheese and just roll it in the sides and you have a nice stuffed crust right there. I'm just gonna do a little bit of pepperoncini on this bad boy. Oh, that, oh, it smells so good. Daddy like. Now for the cheese. Now if you don't got fresh mozzarella, don't worry about it. It's not that big of a deal. Fresh mozzarella, trust me, once you use it, you'll never go back. And I always use just regular mozzarella just to fill in the spaces. You can use cheddar, you can use Parmesan, you can use basically anything you want, but mozzarella is like the go-to when it comes to pizza. Now me personally, I like my pizzas a little bit extra cheesy, so I'm gonna add some Parmesan on top as well. Now for the seasoning part, this part's extremely important. You can do it on top of the pizza, or you could just do it on sauce and then put the toppings on top. You do a little bit of basil. Oh yeah. A little bit of oregano's. Garlic powder if you're feeling frothy, if you're feeling extra garlicky. I know a lot of people like garlic on their pizzas. Then red pepper flakes just for a little bit of spice. Not too much because red pepper goes a long way. And then a little secret, a little secret seasoning is just, just a little dash of sugar. Nothing too much, just a little dash of sugar just to add some sweetness to the pizza pie. Now after all that, you got yourself a nice freaking pizza, let me tell you. So I'll put 12 minutes on the timer and then now, because this dough actually kind of expanded a little bit, it's nice and fluffy, we're gonna work on the cheese bread. Now this is the easier one. Uh, you can use a rolling pin if you want, but the big issue with the rolling pin is it gets really dense and you lose like the fluffiness you get in this dough. Kind of same thing you did before, except this time you're going to extend it this way. You're not gonna be going in a round shape, you're gonna be like pushing it with your hand, massaging it. Oh, you like that? You like that? You filthy dough. You dirty dough. Oh, you're so dirty. Actually, you're pretty clean because I washed my hands before this because Corona's bad. Now, the reason the cheese bread is so much easier is it doesn't require ragu. Uh, you can literally just put stuff on it. You can put freaking ramen on it. You can put anything you want. Grab some cheeses, throw it on there, some, some meat. So maybe you got some bacon in there. Like, just throw some stuff on there. Ranch, uh, uh, I, I don't know, what do people like, freaking mayo? I, I know people can make like a BLT thing on this. When the moon hits you high, like a big pizza pie, that's a Ravioli, that's a mole. Oh yeah. Screw it, you can make some taco cheese bread, get some taco meat get some Doritos, get some taco sauce on there. That would be a good ass freaking uh, bread right here. Now, once again, something very important, seasoning. We need some garlic powder on top of this. Obviously we could do the works, the basils, the oregano's, the red peppers, all that different stuff. And we got ourselves a nice freaking uh, a cheesy bread. Now this one, you don't have to do a bunch of fancy flipping and stuff because you're not really making a round shape, kind of just making it is this little like rec almost almost rectangle, a little oval kind of shape. Just think people, all of this for just a couple cups of flour, some water, sugar, salt, and then some random toppings you can find around the house. This shit's easy to make and it's pretty fun to make too. Serious time everyone, I'm not like a rich YouTuber, you know, I can't uh, donate to uh, charities to help people out. Like we're struggling as well, but I just wanted to try to give something to you guys in this, you know, try in these trying times to maybe build your spirits, 
you know, give you something to do, uh, give you something good to eat when you, maybe you don't have anything good to eat at this point in time because every single store is completely sold out. Or maybe you can't even afford to really buy anything else. You can't really afford to eat out or anything like that. This is something that's extremely cheap. You can make plenty. You know, there's a lot of stuff. Like if you have a decent amount of flour, sugar, salt, and yeast, you could have food for a week, two weeks, maybe even a whole month. I mean, I know I say this a lot, but I really appreciate all of your guys' support. And in a situation like this, I feel like I owe it to you guys to try to do something, you know, try, try to give you something back in order to help. All right, it's starting to look like the pizza's getting pretty crispy. Oh, look at that. Look at that right there. That, that right here, that's a pizza. Oh, so good and tasty. But you see what I mean about the cheese? It's got a nice browning on top. Everything is completely cooked. Oh my God, look at that. Look at that freaking cheesy bread, let me tell you what. Oh, I would, I would bathe. I would bathe in that cheese. I mean, sure, I'd probably get uh, third degree burns, but damn, that cheese though. Oh shit. The possibilities are endless with this shit, guys. You can make fancy at home stuff for literally basically nothing, all right? But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you guys use this recipe. If you do, please send me a picture of it on Twitter so I can Gordon Ramsay your ass and tell you how either bad it is or how good it is. I don't know, maybe you blew me out of the water and you made something way better than this. But before you guys go, I have one extra treat for you. That's right, Raycon, the best earbuds in the game, the best wireless earbuds in the game. And today we're gonna be talking about a sweet deal with the Everyday E25 earbuds. Raycon starts about half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds you could find. And every single one that I've ever used pales in comparison to Raycon. And, and trust me, I know I've said this before, but coming from an audio producer perspective, these earbuds are just incredible for what they are. And we all know I'm sporting the new E25, six hours of playtime. I said this last time, when I mean playtime, I mean playtime, because I've had these not charged for the longest time. I just plop them in for probably two weeks, three weeks, I just plop them in here and there. They're still freaking working. It's playtime, baby. Not They don't die from sitting around. It's straight playtime. And honestly, they're extremely comfortable. I honestly forget they're there. And if you're a fancy boy or a girl, you can get different colors. I mean, hey, while you're making my pizza, you can plop in one of these. Listen to your Nicki Minaj's or your Post Malone's or, or whatever have you. So what are you doing? Go to the link in the description, get 15% off your first purchase of these. I promise you, I've said this a billion times, you will not regret it. Get these today. Mwah. So click the link in the description, buyraycon.com slash bionicpig, 15% off your order. Get it now, bitch. But please everyone stay safe out there, eat some pizza, chill out for a while until everything kind of dies down and then we, we all can be happy again. Stay away from your grandparents. I mean, hey, stay away from your parents if you're still at home. Just chill out at home. Make some freaking pizza, play some games, listen to music with your Raycon headphones. I mean, come on guys, this is, this is our time. It's, it's gamers time, let's go. Us gamers will thrive. I know we've joked about it in the past, but it is time for the gamers to rise up. Also talking about gamers, make sure to check out my Twitch stream because I'm probably streaming right now, so go check that out. I love you, goodbye.